Hello again, I am Blunty. Say, do you happen to know what one of these is? If you said cigarette lighter, you're an idiot because that's not what it is. You've fallen victim to my cunning ruse. This is, in fact, a video camera. Seriously. But then again, maybe I was just a bit too cocky because chances are it says spy camera in the description of this video and you might have leapt to that conclusion already. Anyway, comes in a box like that, takes videos, takes stills, it costs me all of $12 from a place in Hong Kong, and I'm going to be reviewing it for you today. Now, in the specifications listed in the manual, this camera apparently records at 1280 by 960 at 30 frames per second. What it actually churns out, though, is closer to up to 12 frames per second. It tends to vary a bit as you'll see as you watch this demonstration footage. And the image is pretty obviously upscaled. The image sensor hardware itself is most likely 640x480. The kind of image sensor you may have found in a cheap camera phone from 1997. It also has a time and date stamp on the video which I've been unable to discover if you can even turn off. Run, you freaky three-legged gingerbread bastards, run at a stuttering 12 frames per second. And just to give you an idea of how wide this lens is, I'm holding the camera now at arm's length, and as you can tell, it also records sound, of course. Although I've noticed it will often be wildly out of sync with the actual video, and as you can hear, the sound quality sounds not dissimilar to earache with a titanium studded marital aid. In use, the camera is a bit unpredictable. Sometimes it'll record smoothly enough, other times it'll inexplicably drop to a very low frame rate, or the picture will freeze completely while the sound continues to record. Of course, with no screen on the tiny device, you'll have no idea which recordings worked and which ones glitched up until you actually import the files and start trying to watch them back. At first, I thought it was because I was using a rather slow Class 2 memory card, so I switched it out for a much faster one, but the results were precisely the same. I did some experimentation trying to find out what can cause the picture to freeze up or the frame rate to drop and while I failed to find a foolproof way to guarantee a smooth video recording I did discover that the glitches and frame rate drops were more likely to happen when moving between different lighting conditions such as moving between indoors and outdoors. And strangely enough, the camera seemed much more reliable in indoor lighting conditions than the brightly lit outdoors where most other cameras are at their happiest. It might have something to do with how the image processor handles hard contrast. In any case, once you learn what's most likely to make the recording crash and burn like an epileptic pilot in a thunderstorm, you can try to work around it and more often than not the recordings will work just fine. The lighter cam can also take stills at the same upscaled 1280x960 resolution as the video, but unlike the occasionally glitchy video, every single time I asked it to take a photo, it took a photo. And so long as you hold your hands steady enough not to blur the snapshot, they'll look, well, just awful, really. Again, very reminiscent of the bad old days of early camera phones. The image is soft and grainy and the colour and contrast leave much to be desired. But you'll find that with a bit of skilled fiddling in an editing application, they'll still look awful. Just a slightly nicer kind of awful. But honestly though, considering the tiny size and the $12 price tag, it actually does a pretty decent job. And if you don't actually need it to spy on your cheating spouse, thieving employees or your heavily drinking nanny, it's enough to have a bit of fun with. A kind of old fashioned shoot from the hip, you'll never know what you've got until you import it kind of adventurous shooting. And hell, with the current trend of hipster toy camera shooting that for some inexplicable reason celebrates the shitty images you get from plastic lenses and poorly constructed camera equipment, some of the shots you'll get will fit right in when you post them to your goddamn Tumblr blog alongside some vapid quotation masquerading as a life lesson insight. You massive douchebag. So anyway, there you go. That's a cigarette lighter shaped spy camera thingy that I picked up for all of 12 Dollars. And it actually works pretty well. Well, about as well as you can expect a piece of $12 Hong Kong import gadgetry to perform. But really, if you expect any more from that, from a $12 piece of Hong Kong gadgetry, you're a bit stupid, really. You can have a bit of fun with it, or you can go full-on creepy pervert with it. But I wouldn't really recommend it. I can't tell you what to do with it. All I can do is present you with the options and the tools that are out there. And this is one of them. Just don't 
don't don't go all creepy with it. You'll get arrested, and you know I can't. I'm not taking responsibility for that. It's a bit of fun. Go shoot from the hip and pretend you're a hipster douchebag. Anyway, I'm Blunty. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.